hi to everybody and their neighbor. Welcome back to Gear and Gigs. I'm your host, Jet Stone. As always, here I am, waiting for you guys to join me. Where have you been? All right, you're here, though. That's good. And I am here with Reggie. How's it going, Reg? Good. Good. Good to see you, Jet. All right. He held up his fingers like anybody could see him, but we're still in the opening credits. <laughs> That's all right. Here we are. Hey, glad to see you, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right, Jet. Good all to right. see you. I'm just in such a good mood because I got something really unusual to show you today. It's a little show and tell in the studio with Reg. And uh, I don't know what this does. I'll be quite frank. I have no idea exactly what this does. I haven't really read anything about it other than just enough to be dangerous with it. I can't find anything online about it except for the manu from the manufacturer themselves. And even that wasn't the easiest thing to find. I can't find any videos on it. I can't find anybody else referencing it. I got it from another studio owner here in Dallas who swapped it to me amongst some other stuff. And he's already got one and he had two. And he gave me this one and said, have fun with that. And I'm like, okay. So we're gonna. I'll maybe. tell you this much. Um, it's very obvious to me, being intimately aware of that studio, that there is some kind of a large magic cover with sparkles, like a real magic cover. Uh, and it's... I don't know what's under it, but the size of what it's on, at least, is big enough where, you know, I, I just, I am be seriously... Screw. You don't know. It could be anything. It could be some kind of magic screw, yes. Right. Well, what it is and what it looks like are not necessarily connected. What it looks like is, uh, is this. Okay. Right. Is that okay. clear it all up? Everybody knows what that is. I don't even have to do the review. <laughs> I mean, it looks like two knobs, some lights, maybe some sliders, and a button. It, it looks very similar to something that might have been made, uh, I don't know, 1980s Soviet Union era technology looking thing. Oh. You know, it, 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 uh, it's, it's called the FX Tracker, the FX Tracker. And it's by a company called Backline Engineering, right? Okay. I know. And... It's a stereo pedal, and it does stereo out. Uh, it's got MIDI, and it's got foot switch control, but we're, we're just going to tr try to stay around the front end on this one and see where we go. Um, it's uh, rustically enhanced, shall we say, technologically speaking. It's interesting. It's not got any touch screens or LCDs. We're rocking an LED two-digit display. We've got two knobs that act as push knobs and turn knobs. And then we've got two slider switches. We're going to try to stay in preset land just because apparently there's going to be a lot. And I, I get the idea we we're, we shouldn't mess with it too much until we know what it does. Exactly. But it is an effect. I mean, you don't device. want anybody to get hurt, right? That's the, that's the first consideration. <laughs> well, I don't know about picture. I don't want to, but not yet. Not yet. Right, hurting okay, comes no, later. Certainly not on the first go. Right. It's, it's like a long-term marriage. The hurt comes way later. Way later. Yeah. Way later. Present company accepted, of course. Of course, happily married guys, you and I. Yes. Not to each other, just to be no. here. <laughs> okay, so here's where I get to dial up presets. All right, so you got a zero, zero through a 99. Yes, basically. exactly, exactly. So I'm going to start on zero. Um, just for our signal chain, just to let you know, I'm sorry, I should have brought this up. Uh, got a uh, custom shop, uh, 60, 60 strat, custom shop, 60 strat. Uh, we're going into the FX tracker. Uh, we're going in splitting in going into uh, a two rock studio pro 35 and the Marshall class five, which are really not, uh, you know, the same in wattage, obviously, but I'm running them both very quiet, to be honest. We're just looking for the clean sound to see what this thing really does. So we're not going to be hitting distortion and we're not really going for a lot of volume. So in this case, the, the wattage disparity really won't matter. Uh, both are being mic'd with uh, I basically identical vintage tube mics. They're going into uh, identical uh, ISA-1 Focusrite preamps, analog preamps, coming into our digital board for the A to Ds, getting a touch of reverb there, because uh, neither amp has it. I take that back. The Studio Pro does, but since we're running in stereo and the Marshall doesn't, we'll use stereo, uh, stereo reverb from the board, and then straight into Zoom, we're not recording into any DAWs or anything like that. You're hearing it at the same time we are. No hanky panky here. Just no. And I will turn off. Ride. That's because we're married guys. And I will turn right. off this uh, my room mic here, so you won't pick up anything in the room when we do the testing. Um, let's establish our dry sound first before we get into. Uh, Always my, a good idea. 
Not all of the sounds are stereo, so I'm going to run it in mono, uh, and then when I notice on the metering here that the other channels become active for the other amp, I'll flip it to a stereo sound, so it's not every sound, apparently. Okay, all right, yeah. interesting. So it's, it's stereo capable, but not all the effects on it are stereo effects. Well phrased. That's exactly what Okay, all right. all right. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Basic tone, nothing too sharp, just kind of rounded. All right, if I'm not mistaken, just a, a brief overview. I believe what this thing is, is a digital effect. I believe mm -hmm. it does delay-based things, choruses, flanges, these sorts of things, but I tremolos, I, it may even do pitch shifting, I'm not sure. What it can also do is respond dynamically to what it's given, so it, it can tell, I think, by not only your dynamics, how hard you might play, but also I think maybe by what note you play. I think it might have note analysis where it can actually decide where in the spectrum your note is. Now, I'm not positive, but I, I believe that that's correct. So I think what we're going to hear are effects that aren't just static, but change depending on what I put into it guitar-wise. And they say, okay. the, one thing, the one phrase I happened to catch is I was just flipping through the manual very quickly to get some idea, because it's a pretty thick manual, it said that if you're going to have overdrive or distortion or anything like that, have it after the pedal so that it can tell what notes you're getting cleanly and do what it's going to do before going on. Interesting. So yeah, that, that's, uh, I mean, that's a limitation, obviously, but not, I mean, really in, in the big scale of things, not that big a one. Uh, but, but so it is, it's like a early a track smart of technology, digital multi-effect thing, but mostly time-based. I don't know how early it is. I'll have to flash on screen when it came out because I have no idea. Huh. No idea. Okay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Changing Delay time? Oh, wow. Well, that's kind of different. All right, let's just, let's just be honest right off the bat. First of all, A, that's really cool. Uh, but B, and again, let's be honest, you, you'd be using a delay effect when, and you wouldn't know, I mean, how would that work time-wise? Like if you were playing in the construct of a band or whatever, and there was a rhythm and a beat going on, and your delay was like, well, oh, it's I over here. Oh, no, it's over here. No, it's, oh, it's doing this. Oh, it's, oh, now it's got a three-second tail on it. Like, what, what, what? The, I mean, that's kind of crazy, though. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's what I would label as an unexpected delay. It was hard to figure out exactly how to control it. Let, let's try setting one. Well, that was setting zero. Let's try preset okay, one. Okay, yeah, let's, let's see where this goes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Wish us luck. Oh, wow. And reverse on top of it. Okay, so, I mean, but that was very similar, though, because it did different delay times depending on how and what you were playing, and then all of a sudden it, uh, it kind of got snappy and then gave you a reverse. See, now that's just a little strange. There you go, there's the reverse again.
That's crazy cool. It's I mean, crazy it's, cool. I'm playing so light, and that's how you get it to like come quickly, you know, and, and do that thing. Right. But now there is a threshold, so let me let me mess with the input and threshold on the on okay, the, on yeah, the thing and see if what that does here. So first, I'll uh, I'll mess with the input level because I think I've got it maxed out. So let me let me see what what the input level does. There is a bit of unpredictability about it. Let me, uh, I'll bring the input level back up because it seems weak. But let me adjust the, uh, I'm gonna adjust the threshold to time relation. There's a threshold dash time. Okay. <laughs> it took so long you forgot about that chord and then you're like oh yeah i remember that what do they call this again what's what's its name the, the fx tracker tracker it should it should be called the unpredictability machine the fx wanderer I'm, yeah I, the, I, i'm sure there's some scientific method behind this where uh, am i but, you know if we're going to experiment let, let's experiment so that's Why? like that's the second preset Let's try. Right. Let's I mean, we haven't even scratched the surface. I, I don't know. No, it only gets I, weird from here. I, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, let's see. Now it's flashing a number, but I don't know how to get it out of the number. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to preset two. Are you ready? I I guess. <laughs> okay. Wish us luck. Here we go. Oh, that's kind of normal. Interesting. That's a little bit of bendy pitch kind of modulated delay there. Wow, with a little bit of what you call portamento there, huh? That's cool. Is this the same preset just tweaked in there? It's a different preset. It's the next one up. Okay, I like this one right now. This is this is cool. Ah, oh, that's that's so cool. How it changes the time on it as well. It's like having a little synth playing along with you. <laughs> All right, that's, that's 
that's a cool effect. I like that a lot. Worth the price of the pedal alone if it all if that's, if that's all it did. Oh yeah, it could just do that, and I'm, I'm happy. That's awesome. total winner right there, man. Just oh mark that God. one down in Sharpie on the pedal, whatever number that one is. Number, number three, just everybody. Number three. Hey, it's just awesomely fun. I don't yeah, know what to do with cool. it. But, oh my God, that's just a well. Blast. You just you, you write <laughs> a piece of music that features some kind of solo with that, and that's the thing because it does. It literally sounds like a guitar being tracked perfectly by a synth. Yeah, with this changeable portamento depending on thing how going hard on you it play. Or thing. It's very fun. It's it, with distortion yeah, and imagine. delay. I mean, you'd be like in in. Well, I don't know what kind of heaven, but that that's okay. Well, that's number three. So, I'm I'm fascinated for number four. I, I've just I, I well, I'll tell you what. I, my my opinion of it has just gone through the roof. <laughs> Seriously, that was a cool effect. <laughs> That's gorgeous. I could just stay on this one for a long time. This is no, I mean, ridiculously fun, man. Ten part series on that. <laughs> on number That's three. Cool. All right, I'm going to number four this time, I promise. Okay. like a vibrato. Very dependent on how hard you play and what it does. Yeah, but I'll, again, no, another winner. Very usable. Very uh, usable. yeah, I love that. I love the way that because it was such a quick pan back and forth. Uh, mm, wide, five. wide field. Yeah, that was that's really five. nice. I'll, I'll try mono first on all these until I know it's stereo. Okay, it's just a song machine is what it is. It's just this inspirational, like, hey, how about this? Have you thought of doing this? Right. No, of no. I've never well, thought of doing that. <laughs> wow. 
I, I, okay, I'm impressed. I mean, yeah, that's... I gotta say, I'm not disliking this too much, to be honest. I know there's some noise. I'm so sorry about the background noise. I'll try to remember to turn that off when I can. All right, well, uh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta go to preset six. I mean, we're all the way up to preset six, so. The last few have had sort of a theme going with that pitch shifted up. So the harder I hit it, the closer I think it comes to when you hit it. It's not an octave. What is it? Is it like a third or a fifth or something? What, what is it doing? No, it is an octave. It's a song machine is what it is. You just want to put a beat to everything you do. And go, All right, here we go. All right, let's try number seven. Sounds a little phaser. There's a little delay when I'm, I'm, it's like it's not happening at the exact moment. It's like it kind of had a little phaser. Eight more seconds, it, but it's though. very phasery. It's a warm phaser, warm, yeah. slow phaser. I can't tell if it's a flanger or a phaser, but I like it. It's warm and uh, so far more usable sounds than unpredictable ones. So far, so far, it's close. It's mm -hmm. close. All right, we're up. number eight. I've never been more interested in the next preset in anything. Oh my god! Oh my. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clue what you're gonna get. It's, it is literally like it's unpredictable whether it's gonna be predictable or not. Like somebody getting punched in the stomach after every note yeah, play. It's, it's sort of the opposite of the one that was playing the weird little bits, at, you know, an octave above. Yeah. At first, when he started playing, it was like, oh, look, it's like an octave down, but it's not an octave down that tracks side by side. It's like you play the note, and then immediately afterwards, it goes, you oh, know, depending oh, on how oh, right. Oh. Exactly. It's like <laughs> that's a weird effect. I like that a lot. That's it's it's beautiful. <laughs> Number nine.
I'm not sure it's a stereo effect, but I saw some. You know what? So it I don't know. I'm not either. I'm certainly not going to make a judgment on this. But what it felt like it was doing was uh, was stereo. It was like you would play, and it was almost as if the sound itself. It was never fully in one well, ear or the other. It seemed a little kind swirly, of just right? sort of like doing this back and forth. I agree. But the delay was only on the left side. Yeah. All right, number ten. God help us, everyone. I'm only playing one note. I'm playing the same note. It just keeps deciding on doing something different. I, I, mean, I really don't know what to say. Imagine if you like if you got if you really got into editing that thing, somehow, uh, make it play certain notes in a scale. Strange harmonizer type effect. Wow, that's uh, that would take some some learning how to control that one. And I'm sure all of these have got threshold settings and input settings that you can. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, you could probably, they might even have different keys that you can set for. Uh, uh, there's tweak available for each one. Yeah. We haven't even gotten into the tweaks. Next time we find something really interesting, I'll, I'll mess with the tweaks. Here we go. Number eleven. <laughs> So it's got an envelope in the yeah. filter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know it had that in there. Let's try number 12. Like I knew it had any of this in there. Anything, yeah. I, I couldn't have predicted any of this. Harder you hit it, longer the delay. That would be very hard to control, I would think. So it'd be good for when you yeah, a lot it, of the rhythmic ones where it's like de dependent on on amplitude. It really kind of uh, unpredictable. Boy, if you had that tailored just right, you could set it up so that when you're playing rhythm, you'd have the slap back, and then when you got into the solo, it would be really long. And I could see it having some distinct. Oh yeah, I mean, it's already proved its worth, as far as I'm concerned.
All right, I'm gonna tweak that. say i like oh, that I, that's, that's awesome. I like that. yeah that's cool my first tweaking i like the tweaking that was it had so much yeah that was so much flexibility, flexibility. Very different. yeah it was like completely changed the note that was delaying and repeating which was kind of like having a bass play along with you in a weird sort of way Can I play with that? Oh my God. It's like envelope, filter, portamento. I don't know what Weird. It, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a multitude of different things it seems like going on at the same time. And I'm it's, gonna uh, tweak this one. I gotta it's tweak It's tasty. This. It's very tasty. <laughs> Yes, give me more. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Because it's it's uh it's crazy. It's not always good. <laughs> chorus yeah
the lighter you hit, the more modulation you get on that one. That's strange. Tasty good, though. <laughs> it's like... It's, it's like you're it's waiting like, for something to happen, and all of a sudden something really weird happens. It's like you throw something into the lake like a rock, and you turn around, and then it comes back and hits you in the back of the head. What? What can you do? Those earlier ones were kind of just does what it wants to do. Yeah, that's that's another chord. Morse code. Okay, so so far I've heard like a tremolo thing, a delay thing, a, a, an envelope thing, a reverse yeah, thing. Yeah, they chorusy at first. Uh, so here's the thing, like, it's about half and half, but I gotta say the half that are weird are weird in such a beautiful way you know what i mean it's like i don't know how you would actually tame that and use that within some kind of rhythmic context of a song but at the same time it's just so bizarre you can't help but like it and the other half are so musically beautiful that it almost makes the the crazy ones not even matter All right, now I'm going to cherry pick just through the rest and see what the, you know, for Yeah, yeah, might as well just go random at this point cuz uh Only the delay has the tremolo. Phasey. Thank you. 
I mean, seriously, there. Some of these effects are just gorgeous. Get what you get. Okay. No, I'm loving I'm loving this. This is like a arpeggiator, like a you know, like a random harp. Yeah, two enthusiastic thumbs up for this baby right here. tweeted to see what it was i think it's a tremolo that they used to do that but that was cool with the distortion yeah story. that was that very cool. very cool still about half and half Thank you. 
And I think we have run through the, the presets. What? I'd like, it's a pretty straight 50-50. The 50 that are, that go in the WTF pile are still <laughs> uh, magical in their own way. Right? They're, and, and I'm sure that with the amount of tweakability that you'd have, those are the presets. That's whatever either came with it loaded or whatever the previous owner had said it as right uh -huh. so you don't really know what those half are potentially um but the other half are truly magical true i mean some uh, very unique effects that yeah you might have heard some version of that here or there in this pedal or that pedal or whatever else but just the sheer volume of different effects that you get out of it and the quality of them and the uniqueness of them is just uh you know, like I said, it's it's well worth exploring just doing a whole album's worth of guitar music using that pedal as the centerpiece. Yeah, it's... I, I've never played a pedal where I was so excited to hear the next one preset, had no idea what the next preset would be, and they where they sounded so completely different that you... Even after you played it, you're not sure what to expect, like to go to tweak it. I mean, there's an in-depth manual and there's charts and everything where it actually lays out what all the things are. So you can go in and really do Oh, it I'm sure you properly. can make that stuff, make every single preset something that's usable in one way or another. Uh, it was interesting, though, because like you said, you started with zero. I think we went zero, one, two. So the first three we heard were all in that WTF category, like. Well, I've never heard anything like that before, but how would you ever use that, right? But like again, like you said, I'm sure there's all sorts of editing that you can actually take those first three and turn them into something not only usable, but beautiful. But then you hit number three, and now I don't even remember because there were so many different ones between then and, and now. Oh, that was the one that swelled up a little bit, like a synth was following it. Yes, that was gorgeous. It was like, oh my God, that's like, that's... That's the tracking on it was impeccable. It was like, yeah. oh man, that's just uh, that's when I first started thinking it. Like, oh my god, a, a guitar solo over whatever using that effect on it would be so unique and different. And you know, in a single track, you could be basically laying down what would be two or three tracks ordinarily, right? Trying to sync them perfectly. It's a lot of effects at once. Sometimes it sounds like up to four or five different phasers, flangers, horses, tremolos, uh, you know, filtery things, envelopey things. I mean, obviously, yes, lots of delay things, reverse delays, ping pong delays, super fast, super slow. Uh, <laughs> some of them, you, you don't know what you're going to get until you get it. I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, that is a, I would have to say, I've never heard of that before. I've never seen that before. Uh, and now I'm intrigued to spend more time delving into what it's capable of, because I bet it can do far more than what we've just yeah, yeah. gone through. Well, well, what we'll do is we'll try to master this, or maybe, it, I don't know if it can be mastered. We're going to try to get a rain on this, maybe yeah, stand yeah. up some presets, and then we'll come back and show you some of the things we've come up with after we've tweaked this thing, because, Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Man, oh, man, there's so much in there. And... Uh, in such a deceptive looking box. I mean, it could not be more deceptive for what it does. You would never expect it to do a tenth of that. It doesn't even have a touch screen. It has no touch screen. Yeah, it's everything has a touch screen now. Come on. <laughs> what, what, is, what is this? That's why yeah. I said, I don't know what kind of technology, the digital technology from the 1980s, maybe. Uh, it, but it, it, it looks newer. Look more 1982. It really looks straight out of the DeLorean. I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> that's where it's it from. has that look. Doc Brown made it, and now I understand. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us in this incredibly experimental but super fun uh, exploration of the FX Tracker by Backline Engineering. Good luck finding any information on that. <laughs> Please, if you know anything about it, comment below. Uh, for Reggie, I'm Jet, and we'll see you next time on Gear and Gigs. Take care. Thanks everybody for joining us for another episode of Gear and Gigs. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course YouTube. Until next time, this is Jetstone saying, take it easy.